Um, today, as we begin a new sermon series, um, people, you know, were probably asking, why Grinch? What's, what, what's this about Grinch? Um, and if you've never seen the movie or if you've never read the book, um, it's an interesting story about a Grinch. I don't know what you call him. He's some sort of animal. He's a Grinch. And I looked up the word Grinch, and there is actually, actually a definition for the word Grinch. And a Grinch is a person who lacks or a person whose lack of enthusiasm or bad temper has a depressing effect on others. That, that's, what, that's what a Grinch stands for. It's a person whose lack of enthusiasm or bad temper has a depressing effect on others. Now, now we just came back from New York, and New York was, I love New York. It's, it's, it's all my people are there, you know, a bunch of Puerto Ricans. And, you know, but New York, um, it's, it's, if you've never been to New York, it's, you have to go to, to New York at least. I tell people at least once in your lifetime, you have to go. It's such a fast-paced city that people are moving at a pace where it's, it's odd to us that come from the West. And I, I see people, and I was telling my wife, this is the first time I've been to New York probably maybe 10 times. And this is the first time that I realized I was walking the streets, and I was looking at people that had a one-track mind. They were going from point A to point B. They didn't, they didn't care who you were around. They didn't care what you looked like. They didn't care. They could care less if I was even there. And I, I realized that we go about that in life. That there's people that are walking around like Grinches. They, they have no, they lack enthusiasm. They, they have bad tempers, especially in this time, right? Christmas where some people, they, they have a, a bad temper. I got I to gotta buy this for my kids and I got I to gotta get this for, for my kids and, and, and they need it. Uh, let me help you, uh, parents. Your kids don't need anything. They have a roof. My dad used to say, you, um, you want that phone? You got a roof over your head, right? You, you, you want that? Oh, you got a bed to sleep in, right? You got a pillow, right? My dad used to tell me, like, that's messed up, dad. Let me get a phone. Like, you have a roof, right? You don't pay no rent, right? And so we have people that walk around like Grinches. And they're supposed to believe in God, and they know God, but, but I have to buy this, and I have to work overtime so, so I can buy things I don't need and, 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 and purchase things that, that my kids uh, will throw away the next day. And so a Grinch. Say with me, Grinch. Don't be a Grinch. It's a person whose lack of enthusiasm or bad temper has a depressing effect on others. We know, we know people like that in our jobs, right? They, 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 you get there and they bring your spirit down. You get there and it's like, why are you here? Now, now there's one thing that I've understood in life is that whatever somebody is going through doesn't have to affect me. Too many times we allow people's uh, emotions to affect my emotions. Too many times we allow people's depression to depress me. And I want you to know that as we get into the sermon series, it's only a couple of weeks. I want you to know that, that I, I, the one thing I don't want you to be is a Grinch. Say with me, I don't want to be a Grinch. And so I'm going to give you four steps on what a Grinch is. I got to help you with this. I, I got to help us with what a Grinch is. Now, number one, a Grinch is a taker. A Grinch is a taker. They, they, they love to take. They hate to give, but they're, if you've ever watched the movie, right? He, went, he wanted to steal Christmas. He wanted to steal Christmas joy, the Grinch, from the Who's. And so, so he's a taker. You know, one thing I, I love about my God, in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his only son. Not second son, not third son, not fourth son. His only son. This is, this is what I love about God. That God is the ultimate, I call him the ultimate giver. He's not the ultimate taker. If he was, he would have never sent Jesus for you and for me. But he's the ultimate giver. So, so God so loved the world that he gave his only son that, that who ever. The who's are mixed up in there, right? Whoever believes in him should not perish but have what? eternal life this is what I love about God it doesn't matter what you've gone through it doesn't matter what you're going through it doesn't matter what you did God loves you he sent his son to die for you for God so loved the world who's the world everybody pastor are you serious that person that woman when I walk into my office she just is ugh. yeah the ugh one God sent Jesus for her 
Are you with me? He loved the world so much that he gave his only son. So God is the ultimate giver. A Grinch is a taker. God is a giver. This is what I love about God, that, that God is such a giver that when he created us, I, I love this in Genesis. It says that, that he, he, he spoke the world into existence, right? Let there be light. Boom. Let, let there be birds in the air. Boom. Let the animals. And he spoke everything into existence. But the only thing that he formed with his hands was man. The Bible says that he got, he got some clay, dirt, and he began to form man with his hands. He said, let's make man in our image. That's proof that, that, that it wasn't him by himself, that it's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so I want you to understand that, that, that God formed us, but not only did he form us, he breathed life into us. And he made us in his image. So if I'm made in the image of God, let me say it like this. My, my son looks like me. He's handsome. He's debonair. He's buff. Some of you laughing. Why are you laughing? I'm trying to be serious right now. And I realized that my wife says, he looks like me. I said, I said girl, he, he got girls lining up. Woo, Stacy's back there like, what? You better. <laughs> he had girls lining up. Because he was made in the image of his dad. And I realized, here's what I realized. My wife at times, she says, okay, Wilfred. If you don't know Wilfred, that's my dad's name. And there's times where I act like my dad. And she says, you'll be preaching, you'll say something. She's like, stop it, Wilfred. And I'm like, why, why are you? I'm rude dog, girl. I'm. But I realized something. That I not only look like my dad, but I'm made in my dad's likeness. And I will act like my dad at times. Come on, good, bad, or indifferent. We act like, our, you know, some of our parents did some dumb things, and we act like them sometimes. And, and this is what I love about God, because we were made in his image. Because we were made in his image, we got to be like our God. And because if I'm like my God, he is the ultimate giver. I must be a giver, not a taker. A Grinch is a taker. Number two. A Grinch has trust issues. A Grinch has trust issues. They, they, they don't know who to trust. They, they trust everybody but God. They trust the lottery but God. There was a picture I saw, and I, I shared it here one time, and it was when it was like $490 billion, and you saw the news crews going around. There was lines around the block trying to get in these liquor stores. Because people are saying, oh, man, if I win this, I'm going to do this and that. You don't know that the love of money is the root of all evil. Not money, it's the love of it. And too many people love it so much that they're saying, I'm going to do all this and do all that. But you don't trust the God who's in control of all finance. He's in control of all your life. He owns everything. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. That's the God I serve. And so a Grinch has trust issues. They don't, they don't trust. They got walls up all over. They've been hurt, let me build this wall. I got hurt over here, let me build this wall. A Grinch has trust issues. The Grinch didn't trust anybody. That's why he lived up in the mountain by himself. The question is, are you living alone? Are you living around people, but you're really alone because you have trust issues? Here's what it says in Proverbs 3 and 5. It says, trust in who? With all your and do not lean on your own understanding. Here, I want to tell you this. You have to trust in the Lord. Don't trust in people. People will fail you. People are going to let you down. Oh, Pastor Ruben, I had so much trust in you. I'm human. I'm going to let you down. You're not going to like everything I do. Too bad. That's life. I don't like everything you do. But, but my trust is not in man. It's in God. Because God, the Bible says, will never leave me, nor will he forsake me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. See, God doesn't want your money. He wants your heart. God doesn't need your money. He owns everything. But if he has your heart, he will have you. And he'll guide you and he'll lead you. So you need to trust in the Lord with all your heart and not lean on your own understanding. That's what that saying in there, there is saying. Stop saying I know. There's too many I know people around. You tell them something, I know. You tell them, hey, uh, let me show you how to do it. I know. 
Never done in their life. I know. And so I call those people, I know people. You can't teach them anything because they know it all. But really, we don't know everything. There are things that we're learning every day. Are you with me? So a Grinch has trust issues. Trust in the Lord. Trust in who? The Lord. Don't trust in yourself. Don't trust in your neighbor all the time. And I'm not saying never trust in them. You should be able to trust in your spouse. You should be able to trust in people that you love. But, but not above God. I have to trust in God above all else. Because God's never going to leave me. It never says in the Bible that people are not going to leave me. Matter of fact, it says people are going to abandon you. But God will never abandon me. So trust in the Lord. Number three, a Grinch is always troubled. They always got issues. They always have problems. I, 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 I can't take it, Pastor. Every week, I can't, I can't go on with life. I am so burdened. My troubles are so far away. Like, come on, man. You're, you're always troubled. You always got issues. I remember a boss that I had. I, I, was, uh, I used to work for m and Mars Candy. And um, I love m and Mars Candy. It was a great company. And I had an office here in Santa Fe Springs. And my, my main office was in Atlanta. And so I was a district manager. I had 3,000 stores under me. And so um, I had a problem. I was troubled. And I called my boss in Atlanta. I said, hey, man, I got a problem. And all I heard was click. And I called back and I said, hey, we were cut off, but I just wanted to tell you I have a problem. Click. And I opened, I picked up the phone. I said, hey, man, I think there's a storm in Atlanta or something because the phone keeps, you know, hanging up on me. I, I have an issue. And I heard click a third time. And by that, I was already upset. And I said, wait a minute. I called him back. I said, hey, man, the phone keeps hanging up. What's going on? If you hang up on me again, we're going to have problems. Now, I didn't tell him that because I, I would have got fired. But, but I was thinking that. But I was upset. And I said, hey, man, why do you keep hanging up on me? He said, why did I hire you? If you're in charge of all these stores, in charge of California and all this area, and you have an issue, and you want me to solve your problem, why do I need you? And I took a step back and I said, too many times we have issues and we want to call people. Hey, I have this problem. And, and my wife calls it like this. She says, suavitel. You guys know what suavitel is? It's the softener, the Mexican softener. The suavitel, right? And my wife, she made this up. She says, I'm not here to suavitel you. In other words, I'm not here to put downy up in you to make you soft. And No. And I'm, gonna, I'm here to tell you if, you, if you want empathy from my wife, don't go to her. She's going to be real with you. She's going to tell you, no, this is, where you, this is the problem, and this is the issue that you have, and this is how it is. Period. If you want suavitel, come to me. And I'll give you some downy. I don't do sorry till I do downy. Now watch this. A Grinch is always troubled. And this is what the Lord showed me in, in John chapter 14, verses 1. It says, let not your hearts be what? Believe in who? Believe also in? This is Jesus speaking. See, troubles will come, but you must believe that God will bring you through. They're going to come your way. You're going to lose your, your job. You might lose your job. You might, you might lose someone. Troubles are going to come. Jesus said, look it, uh, even, though, even though these troubles come, be of good cheer, for I have come overcome the world. Even though these trials and these tribulations come your way, I am with you. You're not walking alone. The problem is when we try to walk alone, we try to do it our way. And God is saying, that's why you're troubled, because you're doing it your way. Here's too many times where we call people and we say, hey, uh, can you, I'm hurting I'm troubled. And you call people and, oh, it's okay. That's the suavitel. My wife is talking about the suavitel, right? It's okay. No, you're going to be okay. And then you call somebody else because you, you want them to empathize with you. Simp, can, you can you just suavitel me? Can you just make me feel good? And you like to feel good in your trouble. And God is saying, stop crying already. Stand up and don't be troubled anymore. Let not your hearts be troubled. Why? Because if you believe in God and you believe in me, I'm going to bring you through. Don't be a Grinch. Don't be troubled. Trouble comes to us all. 
Come on, it starts, it, the trouble comes to me, comes to my family. But I don't sit there and wallow in my troubles. That's what the enemy wants. He wants you to make, he wants you to feel sorry for yourself. He wants you to be like, oh, I can't do it. I hate my life. Get up, dust yourself off, and keep walking. It happens to us all. But I'm not going to let trouble stop me because there's a purpose that God has for my life. And if I allow the enemy to stop me, guess what? I'm stuck and so is somebody else because my life is to help somebody else. I'm not going to sit here and allow the enemy to stop me. Don't let your trouble stop you. Tell the person next to you, don't be a Grinch. Come on, yell at them. Don't be a Grinch because they're yelling it back at you too. Here it is, finally. A Grinch lives in the past. A Grinch does what? They live in the past. It's, it's interesting because I, I, I realize this, that those that live in the past, they're always looking back. They're never going forward. So they look back and they try to go forward and they look back and they try to go forward and guess where they're going? Nowhere. They're staying in place. And that's the problem with people that live in the past. The Grinch always wants to live in the past. Poor me, poor me mentality. And I'm living here, but God has a present for me, and it's so nice. You see this? I want to I unwrap that so bad. You know what's under that? It's a box. But I don't care because it looks pretty. Because it's called a what? A present. That means that it's a gift. God has a gift for you, and it's called the present. And he wants to take you to the future, but you're stuck. God, Why? Why did he leave me? Because he wasn't for you. That's why. Move on. There's somebody better. God, why did she hurt me? Okay, she hurt you. Move on. Put the walls down and God's going to bring somebody better that's going to love you. Come on. I need you to understand that, that a Grinch lives in the past. Now watch this. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? New creation. See, that's what I love about God. He does everything new. He doesn't do things. He doesn't do old things. He makes all things new. The old has what? It's away. The old has passed away. I wish I was living over here still. No, God brought you here to CWC for a reason. Because he doesn't want you to live where you used to live. He wants you living here because he has something new for you. There is, if, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has what? Here's what the Lord showed me. The new can't come unless you let go of the past. You cannot hold on to the past and God's trying to give you something new. It'll never happen. It, it reminds me of the relay race. Remember that? The, the, when, when, uh, I don't know if they call it the triple relay and, and one is running and they have the baton, right? They got the baton. What's that called? It's a relay race. So they're running. And all of a sudden, the other person's like this waiting for it. But they can't move forward until they grab it, right? They're not trying to move back. They're moving forward. And if God, I'm, I'm telling you, you better get this. God wants to give something to your hands, and he wants you to move forward. But if you're waiting for it and not, you got to let go of the past. Let go of the past. There's too many new things that God wants to do for you. But you got to let go. Don't hold on. Pastor, you don't understand. Yes, I do. I've been through it too. I've been through hurt. I've been through pain. I've been through struggles. I've been through not having. I've been through it all. One thing that I know is that through it all, God has never left me, nor has he forsaken me. Because I didn't let, I let go. And I said, God, you have something better for me, so let me go forward. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Say, wouldn't it be new creation? You're new. There's no old. Your jealousy, if you're jealous, don't be jealous. You're new. Pastor, you don't understand. I was thugged out, and you're not thugged out anymore. You're new. I, I, that's, that's why I say, listen, even to the point of the way you dress, uh, God's changing me from the inside out. I looked today. I said, you see, though, you look like a professor. What, what's up with them glasses on? Man, look at you. Him and David were rocking their glasses. I said, look at them. Teach me my ABCs right now. Because God does things new. I can look at you and know you've been, you're changed. You're not the same. I remember these, these dudes walking here all thugged out. I said, oh, man, get the oil. Let me throw them at it. Because we want you to come in one way, but God's going to make you leave another way. Because he makes all things new. 
So a Grinch lives in the past. Everything God makes is new. Regardless of your past, he makes it all new. I don't care what you think you've done or what you've done in your past. God can make it all new. It doesn't matter where you've come from. The background you've come through, God, God can make it all new. Say it with me, new. And then, Let me just end here. This is why I don't need to be a Grinch. I, I told you what a Grinch is. A Grinch is, is a taker. They're, they have trust issues. They're, they're always troubled. They, they live in the past. Tell your neighbor, don't be a Grinch. Now watch this. This is, this is why I don't need to be a Grinch. It's really simple. Isaiah chapter 9 and 6. I always say this. Jesus is the reason for the season. The season that we're celebrating Christmas, I love the decorations. I love all that. But don't get it twisted. It's not about the tree, and it's definitely not about the presents. It's about Jesus. It's about what he's done for us. It's about that God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And we celebrate this time saying, thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for coming to this world where you didn't have to. You left your throne and you came down to this earth to be born in a manger, in a shed. He was born for me and for you so that we could have life and life more abundantly. That's what this season is about. And Isaiah 9 and 6 says it like this. For to us, a child is what? Born. To us, a son is given. He, he's the ultimate giver. God gave so much that we cannot be takers we must be givers a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called what wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father prince of peace Th this is this is why I don't need to be a Grinch number one because Jesus is my wonderful counselor I don't need to be a Grinch because he's the one that counsels me you know that word in Hebrew counselor means advise consult purpose and plan it means that he has a purpose for my life and he has a plan for my life and he's my counselor. I'm here to tell you, p people can be counselors. They can counsel you. But, but you need to stop going to people and start going to God. He's the ultimate counselor. He has your best, uh, uh, he, he has your best intent, his best intentions for you. He has a plan for you. So you need to, you need to let him counsel you. The, the second thing is, is, is he's my mighty God. Jesus is my mighty, he, he ain't just a, a, a measly God, he's mighty, he's powerful, he's all-knowing, he's strong, he's my mighty God. Say with me, mighty God. That's why I can trust in him. The, the third thing is, is he's my everlasting father. I love this because there's a scripture that comes to my heart in Psalm 68 and 5 and it says, he's a father to the fatherless. And protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. He's a father of the fatherless. You see, I have a friend. He's a rapper. And, well, and he, uh, he was telling me the story of his father and how his, his father was never there for him. And he, he wrote a song called Father to, father to the Fatherless. And he realized that all of his songs he was writing were bitter towards his father. They were bitter to, to the lack of the father that he had in his life. And I just remember this as, 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 as I, the scripture came up. It came to me how, how he was just bitter and bitter and bitter. And God had to show him the scripture to realize that even though your earthly father wasn't there, I've always been there for you. I'm a father to the fatherless. And his heart changed. Because he said, although I didn't have my earthly father, you've always been there. And I'm here to tell you, some of you may not have had your earthly father, but he's a father to the fatherless. See, I love this because finally, he's a prince of peace. You know, in this world, we're going to have trials. We're going to have tribulations. And I, I, I didn't understand this, how Jesus could say, but be of good cheer. In this world, you're going to have tribulations. And then he tells me, be, be of good cheer. Rejoice. I, I didn't realize that rejoicing and happiness are two different things happiness is based on emotion rejoicing is based on who I believe in and who I trust in so I can rejoice in God knowing that although I'm hurting you're my prince of peace that through the troubles and through the trials and through the tribulations and through the things that I go through you will never leave me there's interesting Things that I've seen with people, have, they've gone through death and they've gone through other things. And I, I, it mar I marveled at how they could just be full of peace. And that peace 
The Bible says it transcends all understanding. Where not even you and I can understand. How is it that they have peace? Because that's what God does. He fills you with his peace. So that even though you're going through the trial and the troubles. And the devil wants you over here. God is saying rest in me. Because I will give you rest. Because I'm your prince of peace. This is why I don't need to be a Grinch. Because Jesus is my counselor. And it's not only counselor. He's a wonderful counselor. You, you, know, you know what I... I realized about this is that when you want to go see a counselor they charge you and if they're a wonderful counselor which means they're a good one but he's a wonderful counselor that doesn't charge you a dime he's saying I love you enough that I want to give you counsel I want to lead you to what I have for your life stop taking advice from people that have never lived what you're living I don't take advice from people that have never pastored and tell me how to pastor. I don't take counsel from people that are trying to tell me how to be a parent when they don't have no kids of their own. Hello. I take counsel from wise people, but more than anything, I look to my God who is my wonderful counselor. And I'm here to tell you, as he's your wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, but more than anything, he's your prince of peace. Rejoice in this season. Regardless of I don't have enough or I can't buy my kids, don't worry about it. They don't need it. If you're loving them, that's more than enough. They need your love. They don't need things. Because things are not going to, they're not going to reciprocate back what they need. They need love. They need encouragement. They need hope. They need to know that you're there. So let him be your Prince of Peace today.